It's a start. In a basement workshop near Purdue University, students Jordan Vallejo and Andrew Rollins are hard at work building a machine that erases a chalkboard using several steps and some bizarre items. I heard a ding. Like a bike wheel, fishing wire, duct tape, and even silly string. That's because Vallejo and Rollins are making what's called a Rube Goldberg machine, or a chain reaction machine, for the 2015 National Rube Goldberg competition. It calls for students to create a machine that completes a simple task in as many steps as possible. We like to do something cool, something interesting, something that you might not think of as being in a chain reaction machine. We have our gumball off. This is not new territory for these two students. In 2014, the Purdue University Rube Goldberg team won the national competition by building a machine that zipped a zipper using some weird stuff. Last year we had toast being popped out into a basket and then a tea bag being thrown into a teapot that was being um, boiled and mixed. So where did the idea for these silly machines come from? Rube Goldberg was actually a Pulitzer Prize winning cartoonist who created a character named Professor Lucifer Gorgonzola Butts. Butts was an inventor whose creations like an automatic back scratcher made readers laugh because they incorporated regular household items into complicated machines to accomplish simple tasks. He never actually meant for these machines to become real machines to actually work. So I find that very interesting. Like building any machine, building a chain reaction machine requires an understanding of how energy transfers from one object to another. It starts with one step and then that one step triggers the next, and it's chain reaction, domino effect sort of deal. That's because a chain reaction machine is what's known as a compound machine, meaning a series of simple machines are connected together to form a more complex gadget. For it to function, energy must continuously transfer from one step to the next through motion, heat, electricity, gravity, or in other ways. With the Rube Goldberg project, a lot of times energy transfer has to do with collisions, whether it's a ball hitting a domino and then the dominoes colliding with each other. Vallejo and Rollins' 2015 machine is not yet ready for competition, so they created a smaller compound machine using similar items just for our cameras. In this example, the machine rings a bell using seven different energy transfers. Can you find them all? One, two, three. Watch the mug fill with water. The mug's potential energy is increasing as the water nears the top. And then the mug drops and the potential energy changes into kinetic energy. Next, that same kinetic energy from the mug is transferred to a string that flips a switch. The switch enables electricity to flow through a circuit to an electric motor that powers the fishing pole. The fishing pole is tied to a cup holding a golf ball. The golf ball is packed with potential energy that transfers to kinetic energy once the fishing line lifts the cup. The ball rolls down a ramp and at the end, its kinetic energy triggers the mousetrap and transfers to the cup of marbles that fall onto the bell. The kinetic energy of the marbles makes the bell vibrate, transferring energy into a sound that you can hear. You can learn about forces in classes, but you don't actually know how they react with each other until you're physically putting something together. I think the biggest lesson learned from this project is troubleshooting and on top of that working as a team. So everything fails, it, no doubt about it, something in what you build will fail. But that doesn't mean that they won't eventually work. All of their hard work did finally pay off in February of 2015. The Purdue Rube Goldberg team took home first prize for the second year in a row. Now it's your turn to design a chain reaction machine. What task would your machine accomplish? And what items would you use to keep energy flowing throughout the machine?